How's it going, everyone? This is Christian Duke from ProgressiveActivist.com. We're here with Scott Sykes. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Christian? I'm doing great, too. We are here in Frankfort, Kentucky, the capital of the Commonwealth. We just had our progressive lunch. We spent a lot of time planning this, phone calls, internet, Facebook, all that fun stuff. What were your impressions of the meeting? I think that the meeting went very well. Um, it's the first time that we've had a uh, statewide candidate agree to meet with true progressives from across the Commonwealth. And uh, the, uh, the, the meeting today was very informative. We were able to come together and coalesce as a group of progressives from every corner of the state and bring forth the, uh, the, 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 our main concerns as, as, as an active uh, part of the Democratic Party here in the Commonwealth, here in Kentucky. And I think that, I think that overall the, uh, the event went really well. Now, a lot of people were uh, very anxious for this meeting. A lot of people especially wanted to know your reactions as far as the uh, Mine Workers Pension Fund and of course Eastern Kentucky, which we all know you're a champion of. You're from there and you represent it very well. And it's unfortunately a part of the Commonwealth that has not uh, received the best representation. What were your sort of take home uh, thoughts on that as far as the meeting went? Well, um, Jim Gray has come out in favor and support of the coal miners pension. But this is why it's important. I don't think that people are fully understanding the importance of it. If we allow the coal companies to default on the coal miners' pension fund, and this is the United Mine Workers of America, all right? If we, are, if we allow them to default on what was promised to our grandfathers and our great-grandfathers who went into the mines to generate profit for these companies and to also mine the coal that made the steel that made the boats and the tanks and everything in World War II and in the Vietnam and really fueled the military, you know, our, our military. Mm. If we allow these companies to default to our, to our families, then this opens a Pandora's box and allows every company that has a union or any type of pension to default on it with no repercussions. That's dangerous. And our working families depend too much on these pensions because it's their retirement. They don't have these stock options. They don't have these, these, these 401ks because they knew their company was going to take care of them after they invested 30 years of their life working and breaking their backs for them. And, and if we allow this to happen, it's a problem and we cannot do it. And it's fortunate that, that, that Jim Gray is in support of, of requiring these companies to honor their promise that they made to their workers. Absolutely, and another thing that a lot of people are wondering at home, and you asked the question, I appreciate you doing so, is about the TPP. Um, what did Jim have to say about the TPP? Jim was straight up opposed to it. And, and, and that is the best thing that we can hope for. Whenever you have a candidate give a nuanced answer to that, because the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership is a disastrous trade deal for the United States and for our workers. We know what NAFTA did, yeah. and we've seen the effects of NAFTA. And, and, and really and truthfully, whenever you look at the manufacturing base and the lack of manufacturing, that means that we have a lack of, of opportunities to diversify our economy which is what we're looking for in Eastern Kentucky right now, because the factories are going to places where they can pay lower wages with, with, without any, any penalty. Right. What the Trans-Pacific Partnership does is it opens the door even further. And, and, and that is, is devastating. And our economy in Eastern Kentucky is already fragile enough. If we allow the Trans-Pacific Partnership to go through, then our economy in eastern Kentucky is stopped. So that's that that that's the main issue that we have to that we have to concern ourselves with at this point. In time. Absolutely. And one issue too that I thought was really interesting, and you had actually talked to uh, Representative George Brown about, is drilling yes. and the fact that a lot of people have no idea what kind of drilling is going on under their very property, and they might actually be taken for a ride. Uh, what's your take on that? I know you brought it up to uh, Jim Gray, and well, you brought it up to a lot of folks also at uh, Nancy Joe Kemper's speech that we also went to at uh, Kentucky State University. Yes. Well, the, the issue that we're seeing in eastern Kentucky, and it goes beyond fracking, 
um, they've entered, they, they've come up with technology over about the past 10 years, maybe 15 years, where they no longer just drill down, straight down. They're now able to go down about maybe one and a half, two miles, and then what they do is they level out and then they go vertical. Mm -hmm. So they're, so, so, and then whenever they go vertical, they're able to drill miles out and they're able to angle that drill in multiple directions. Now a person who is five miles, three miles away from the wellhead, and they don't, and, and they have no idea of what's going on underneath their property. And they may, and they may very well own the oil and gas rights as well as the mineral rights. They're not being compensated. Yeah, and you mentioned that to Jim, and he was he was uh, really uh, taken aback by that. Yeah. And uh, that that's what I think is so unique about our event. It, you know, it wasn't a town hall, it wasn't a debate, it was a high-level meeting. We tried to represent as many progressives as we could. We invited as many as we could, and uh, it was a two-way street. I mean, you know, he answered questions, but we also enlightened him as far as to some things that maybe he wasn't aware of. But 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 to but to stay on on yeah, the please for a second. We are affecting the aquifers in eastern Kentucky and in these mountainous regions where these families once had wells and they didn't have to pay for water. These companies are going in and they're sinking the wells, they're contaminating the wells, and then they're using co severance tax dollars to pay for water lines and then requiring these people because they don't have adequate drinking water any longer that they didn't have to pay for to hook up on that and then you have a private entity then billing these people for the water that the taxpayers paid, paid for the way to, 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 to lay the lines. It's, Outrageous. Whenever you start peeling the game, you just cry. But, you know, it, it's, 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 it's why we're here. It's why we bring these issues, you know, uh, front and center. And it's why that we assimilate, assimilate from across, uh, across the, uh, the, uh, the, the Commonwealth to discuss these issues and bring them to light so that the candidates and that people in position understand what the plight of, plight of the people living up and down the creeks and hollers in eastern Kentucky and the people that live out in the farmland in western Kentucky you have to deal with. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time, Scott. Thank you, Christian. Appreciate it.